Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Chris and I'm doing kind of a special video today. I said I would come on and uh, uh, show my books, my book collection, books I'm reading. I, I tend to collect books which I'm kind of working my way out of and and uh, going toward just keeping the books that I really want to have in my kind of home library. But this is my main desk where I just use the computer and, and then my husband's got a little computer over on the other side. So that's just to set the scene. But to start with right here, uh, of course we can't, we got to start with this I guess. I did this yesterday. I found a permanent home for all my inks. Um, 21 bottles of ink and that's it. Until I empty some bottles, that is it. I'll deal with samples and my bottles and um, I'm like on a no spend for ink. Let's see if I can keep that <laughs> promise. But Okay, so this is kind of my currently studying shelf, just right next to where I work on my desk. And I am studying quite a bit about astrology right now. So I've got three books on astrology here. And uh, this one, this uh, relaxation and stress reduction workbook, I found it very helpful already and I haven't given it justice yet. Uh, Being with Dying, I found that book in a uh, little free library and it's got some wonderful meditations and having already gone through several losses uh, of people and pets, I just found that book so helpful and I don't really want to let it go. I think it'll go on my permanent spiritual shelf, which we'll talk about later. But And then Mindful Eating, the best book I have ever found on uh, helping with, um, you know, uh, getting my eating balanced. And then um, here, Mindful Way Through Depression, that's my favorite book for, you know, for helping with that um, topic. It really, really is wonderful. And it's got a CD in the back, too. I haven't read this one yet, The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion. I think I kind of fell down the rabbit hole when I ordered this one. This one looked good, too, or something like that. It's kind of like pens, actually. And then I've got all my writing books here, except for On Writing by Stephen King. I've got that over on my main writing desk. But this is wonderful. It's about writing memoir, and I'm doing that. I've got it drafted in an icky first draft, I think would be a polite way of saying it. It's about my caregiving experiences and what I what I kind of, you know, from an emotional aspect, and, and we'll see if it ever gets anywhere, but it certainly has been therapeutic. And then Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg. That's a good one, too. Um and I just got this one at the Half Price Bookstore, The True Secret of Writing. Another writing friend said I had to have on writing well. <laughs> and then Bird by Bird, which taught me that the only important thing is to just actually write. Just write with no worry about how it's coming out. So, um, But I like to have these writing books. They're, they're very inspirational. Um, then these are writing books too. These are actually about how to write about what you what your story is and then realize that 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 is just a story that we're telling that we can actually change and then the new diary I'm I'm kind of midway through that one I like it um, just it's like I've tried to read too many books at once I think the big leap was amazing a bunch of Periscope friends was reading that and that's about how we limit ourselves we have kind of like a, a limit on how much good we can let into our life I just love that these two are poetry books, The Gift and A Year with Hafiz. Awesome, awesome poetry, kind of spiritual, very, very spiritual and funny, humorous. I just love it. I, I went to some Sufi classes um, with some really good friends and really, really learned a lot. But it's so interesting. You can read these poems and learn without even like any it's not really studying it's it's kind of touches your soul in a way so and then the miracle morning that's wonderful i love that book the five love languages is really good i just i kind of haven't given it full justice yet that's why it's up here front and center where i can really look at it i haven't read this yet mindfulness i think that was recommended when i it was in another book club uh, Mindfulness for Beginners, I have read, and I've done the CD, and he is awesome. That's wonderful. That, I, you know, I'm keeping because I think this the whole program was so good. Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff is a highly recommended book. I love that book, and I turn to it a lot because I don't retain information really well, so I 
until I really get to know a book and have a notebook full of book, uh, notes, it seems like. And then the seven levels of communication. I watched a, uh, Periscopers talk about this book and I knew I had to have it. I hope I live long enough to read all these books. But And then Loving Kindness, that's another little free library swap that I did. Um, it just looked so good. So this kind of encourages me if I put them here to read them. To be in them more often because this I, this is very accessible right next to my desk. And then I still use a library. I just got another astrology book yesterday at the library and a couple of other books. Um, and uh, my chakra balancing book. It's kind of like a workbook and I'm in and out of that every day. So let's go over here. Okay, so this is the up above my head where I work and there's not much there. Just paper and my... Um, I've got my Dictionary of Spoken Spanish. You need that in South Texas. You really do. Then I've got to the right of that, the Field Guide to Birds. That was my dad's, but I noticed it says Eastern Region. So I'm not sure. I'm, I probably should pass that back to my brother so that, I mean, it's going to mean more to them um, than it does down here. Uh, I love the book. It's beautiful, but we don't have some of those birds. <coughs> Excuse me. And then What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Helmstetter. That as a book that was written 30 years ago that it could have been written today. It's awesome. And I read that every couple of years like I do The Power of Now. It inspires me. Keeps me more positive than I tend to be by my own self. And uh, I know somebody will ask. So these are, are made in Vermont by a neat little company. I'll probably link that because somebody's going to ask. They, they'll, um, they didn't make the moose one, I don't think. I found that in a little shop in Vermont. But... They'll personalize these snowflakes, different kinds of snowflakes, and I just love it. I love looking at it. Okay, so over here to my right, <laughs> kind of uh, out of the way, but uh, not out of mind really, are my cookbooks, my Betty Crocker, my Best of Soups, and then Home Remedies. I tried to get rid of this a couple times, but then I realized, I would realize right before it would be in the pile or something to take to donate, and I'd, I'd need it. You know, it has so much good information. It's old. I've had that at least 20 years. And then at my old church, we did a cookbook. So some of my mother-in-law's recipes are in there. And then I used to have a lot of organizing books. I still have a few. That was one of my favorites by Julie Morgan Stern. Wonderful book. She had two books. I can't think of the other one right now. Getting Things Done, I have not read yet. But, <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't know why I buy so many books. It's like pens, only I, I don't buy as many books anymore. Now I'm buying pens. So, Practical Consciousness, that was just really good. I got that in the little free library, too. Life is hard, food is easy. I read this once, but I don't remember what it said, so I'm not ready to give that up yet. Uh, eat what you love, love what you eat, binge eat for binge eating. That is a really good program. And was very, very helpful, even though I wouldn't call myself a binge eater. I would say that I do definitely uh, do emotional and stress eating. So, And then mindless eating, that approaches it so, from such a neat angle. Uh, it talks about how we're kind of all conditioned to do a lot of mindless eating. Self-compassion diet. You can see a theme here, can't you? Why wait? <laughs> Uh, Deepak Chopra, what are you hungry for? Why have I not read this book? You know, I like him, and you'll see that on my spiritual shelf. Um, then there's a bunch of 12-step stuff. I didn't do well in 12-step <coughs> programs, but there's a lot of wisdom that I still kind of turn toward with it, but I didn't do well, like, with the whole uh, meetings and sponsors thing for eating for Overeaters Anonymous, but a lot of people really do. Breaking addiction is really amazing. I got this because of food and food-related, sugar-related stuff, and it is really amazing. And when I get in there and look at my notes and highlights, it helps me every time. It helps me remember that usually there's some underlying reason has nothing to do with being hungry. <laughs> So, and then this was the first, this book, I lost 30 pounds with this book, The Ultimate Weight Loss Solution, back in 2003, 2004. Um, just from his key four, I think it was, environment. Good book, and I, I've given it to three different people, and then I got this for a dollar at the Half Price Bookstore, so I could hang on to, um, you know, after books are out a long time, you could get them for almost nothing. But I really wanted to keep that. It's a good reference for me. So then down here, not much. Just a dictionary, address book. Uh, my husband just gave me this. And I, I had this was the only place for it. Poems by Tennyson. 
and a Vermont Road Atlas, and that's poetry book. I think belongs to my son. I just put it there. It's pretty, and it's probably going to need to go to him. And then, uh, oh boy, obituaries and important stuff. Okay, I'm going to pause, and we'll go over to another shelf. Be right back. Okay, this is another bookshelf. This is a like legal type bookshelf that I got. It's it's not it's nothing fancy, but it's really helpful for organizing. Up top there is a truck to the right that my dad made, and a couple and a, two trucks, a little one and a really big one. He loved to make those. That chest that's up there that's wooden is full of letters from pen pals. So, and I I got the little basket at a flea market one time. So these are kind of like almost all spiritual books I think and uh, some like uh, meditation for dummies that was in a unity class and I liked it I gave away the CD so I kind of disabled the book <coughs> as far as being able to sell it um, and it is a good reference and then we get into kind of non-dual teachings I I got into that for a little while and <laughs> interesting stuff um, non-violent communication and crucial conversations if you've ever had trouble with communicating with anyone at all. Those are the two best books I've ever found and they've helped a lot. The Untethered Soul, awesome, awesome spiritual book. Frequency also is great. I, I know I've read it all. I, I don't feel I've done them justice till I've read them a couple times though and gone through and you know after a few years and, and asked myself is this still pertinent to me is it what I'm thinking about now the grace factor I haven't read uh, but I I just for some reason picked that up trust your life that is a unity book um, I love the title and I I love the book there's a bunch of bookmarks in there so it shows you I had I had an interest in it Pima Chaudron wrote living beautifully with uncertainty and change anything she writes can calm me down in 15 minutes <clears throat> The Four Agreements. I've given copies of this away so many times and then I go try to fetch one for me because I always miss it. <coughs> Ten Zen Seconds. A really good friend recommended this one. And it's got several um, meditations. Very helpful. These are two of my favorite books by Eckhart Tolle because they're not deep and difficult to read. They're kind of like meditation books. Just just a little, you could read a paragraph and then just think about it, like contemplative meditation, real simple. And uh, I travel with these, or one or the other, usually the practicing, the power of now. It's it's just phenomenal. It's If you don't have much patience for the entire power of now, this is a really small book, and it's just loaded with good stuff. This is one of my first self-help books ever by... Um, it's not the original one, though, because I gave it away. So I got a library copy when I found it on sale. Stay Alive All Your Life by Norman Vincent Peale. It's got all kinds of good stuff. Um, I still read that because I've gotten rid of the book several times thinking, oh, I got this, and then I'd want it again. So Whatever Arises, Love That by Matt Kahn. I can't recommend him highly enough. He's a YouTuber. For anybody deep into spiritual... Um, growth and ascension and trying to become more enlightened he takes the crap right out of some of the other teachings that really messed up my head so he's very good and um, this is an awesome book being mortal by atul gawandi um, this is about growing old what happens in our country with medical care and difficulties people have and it's kind of like a uh, he's suggesting a new way, which I just, it's so refreshing, so good. Um, the Power of Giving, I've not given that full justice yet, uh, but I love the title of that. Rising Strong by Brene Brown, anything she says or writes, I'm interested in. She's really good. The Joy of Less, this is an awesome book by Francine J. It's the best book I've ever read on organizing and, and downsizing and, and trying to minimalize, although... She explains it. It's not as scary as I thought it was. <laughs> the Artist's Way. I've read this several times, and again, I've had copies of it before. So this is where I went and got it again because <laughs> I liked it so much. And, you know, I have access to really cheap books, sometimes free, at the little free libraries, at the thrift shops where they're 80 cents. At You know, I think most of us in, do have access to books where we're not paying full price every time. And then the half-price books... That's about as high as I spend normally on the books. 
art therapy source book. I love this. I spent two summers doing art journaling as kind of therapy after my dad died. Quantum creativity. I read it. I didn't feel I was quite maybe ready for it. And so I've retained it so I can go ahead and uh, work on that again. Writing Down Your Soul. Awesome book by, uh, I can't remember her first name. Let's see. Janet Connor. I've got stuff all in there, but that's the why I have so many notebooks filled up. It's, it's a really, really good process. Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. Um, you'll see Eckhart Tolle is one of my favorite authors, along with uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. So I've got a whole bunch of those. The Truth About Cancer. I watched the whole series, the video series, and I had to have the book. I'm not sure why, because I think I, I got what they were saying there. Excuses Be Gone by Dyer. Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Dr. Dyer. Presence. This book is amazing. And if you don't have time to read the book by Amy Cuddy, just go and see her TED Talk. Oh, my gosh. Just really inspiring. Totally the Black Box Thinking Book by Matthew Saeed is one of the best books I read last year. <coughs> It'll change your mind about failure. It'll teach you that failure is the best thing you can have. Um, Joy on Demand, best meditation book ever by Shad Mengtan. He, was a, he worked for Google. And then Deepak Chopra has written several books I love, but The Third Jesus and... Uh, and uh, Life After Death are two of my favorites. And then stuck in the corner there is the Artist Trading Card Workshop. That's full of beautiful images of trading cards. So now we got to go down to the next shelf. I'm going to kind of use a chair here. Oh, this is like a history thing of my history. <laughs> I was studying to be a licensed Unity teacher. So I got all these, you know, metaphysical Bible dictionary and the... Um, NRSV, the big one with all the study notes and heart-centered metaphysics, story of unity. Okay, I threw in Science of Mind and Course of Miracles because those were, I wanted to kind of make sure I wasn't just reading one type of book even then. And that's one of the reasons I didn't stay the course and become a licensed unity teacher was because I didn't want to become a teacher that had to teach out of just certain books. I mean, every day there's new, new ideas coming on and, uh, but I enjoyed it. I got a lot out of it at the time, and I haven't been able to let go of these books. Some of them have just such good memories of classes I took with good people and friends, and I don't in any way think that what I learned there was bad, but it's like um, this guy here, um, Matt Kahn says, it's like getting on an elevator. You, you, you don't stay on one floor. You just keep going, you know? You keep kind of learning and, and expanding and going up. So... Uh, oh, this was one of my favorite books that I ran across while I was at Unity is the Sermon on the Mount interpreted by um, Emmett Fox, I think. Yeah, Emmett Fox. I got, I had two copies of this. I had one for my mom and one for me. I'm not sure. Oh, I still do because there it is. She she couldn't read it or something and she returned it to me. So anyway, that's an awesome book. And then we get into some pamphlets and this was very helpful when my cat died. Um Soul Comfort for Cat Lovers by Liz Eastwood. Oh, I can't recommend that highly enough. That just about saved my life in terms of how to approach what had just happened, you know, losing two cats. Um, Reverend Jim Rosemergy is my favorite unity minister of all time. He's retired now, but he wrote some really good books, and this was one of them, The Gathering. Um, Discover the Power Within You. Okay, Joelle Goldsmith was one of the first teachers that I kind of learned to look at Christian teachings in the Bible differently, and it was awesome to to study him. So, you know, you can see the theme. <laughs> I mean, I was, I, I was looking for, why are we here? What does it all mean? I still am kind of, but I've, I'm looking at it a little differently nowadays, And but I just haven't been able to let go of these books. So then, um, 12 Powers, I love the study of the 12 Powers, and uh, upgrading your the operating system of the soul was by a local author and, and wonderful person. Um, let's see, Donald Weiner. I never know how to say his last name. Um, these three books. Let's see. There's two copies of Snowflake Bentley. My mother wrote so. Grayson Calvin Coolidge, and uh, Henry Leland, who was kind of related to us a little bit. He inventor there and snowflake bentley the man that photographs snowflakes 
So, and then Buried in Treasures. <clears throat> this is really good. This was a book I got when I thought I could possibly be a hoarder. And, you know, I think there's a scale for all that. We we all collect. And and I, I love that book. And it helped me a lot. It really did. So now, down here, be a little harder, but let's see what we can do. Some more Unity books. And I won't bore you with every single explanation, but... Um, and then the power of kindness stuck in there way back. See, this is getting further back in my spiritual studies uh, where um, uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks, which I still enjoy. I just I moved I moved to a different direction in my study of spirituality then. Well-being, my counselor recommended that one. Uh, Coaching the Artist Within by Eric Maisel and He's got one called Rethinking Depression that's just amazing. That may be out somewhere that I'm reading it. Uh, daily Meditations for Practicing the Course of Miracles. That's a really nice little daily meditation book. I pull that out a lot. So, And then it kind of, oh, Power Versus Force. That was one of my favorite old spiritual books. I had a better copy of it, and I gave that away and ended up getting a ratty copy. But, And then a couple that I haven't really been able to get into by Carolyn Miss. But as someone I really respect and care about, you know, insist that they're great. And I'm, I'm going to just see what it looks like, you know, a little ways from now. So then, of course, right next to here, I already showed you my little desk. And where I have crystal books and currently reading in, two, in a book club, The Lunar Abundance. And next will be Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. So I've already done this. So I'm going to pause and we'll move to the final little sections. Okay, now we're going back in time. Uh, we had to get the Harry Potters because when my son went in the Air Force, he took his with him. So we wanted to have our copies, so we got the little paperback set. And I've got a couple of novels that I want to read this summer. And also, this is a nonfiction by C.S. Lewis, Surprised by Joy. But these are some lighter, probably, novels that I can read. This one's probably on its way out. The life-changing magic of tidying up didn't resonate with me as much as the joy of less oh here's rethinking depression awesome book really really resonates with how i believe and then uh there's the highly sensitive person workbook and book which uh, my counselor recommended and i'd already read the book but i didn't retain a whole lot so and then two of my very favorites soulmates and care of the soul by thomas moore uh, on top of, <laughs> that's a ridiculous combination, isn't it? <laughs> Come to think of it, there's all the Twilight books that my husband got me in the, uh, you know, the, the special edition. But you'll see I have them in paperback. I don't really read these, but they're gorgeous. I mean, oh my goodness. So anyway, and then, oh, movies I need to return to my niece and then let's go down here okay these we can skip these are all my husband's <laughs> and then these are the old romance novels i used to read which i still occasionally do when i just need to stress relief and to read something i'm not really thinking about as much i i could probably tell you what each one is about anyway and there <laughs> there are the twilight books i guess somebody has read the first one a lot more than the rest of them but anyway, there was a time when those were coming out. I, I was really into that. And uh, my husband told me, you can get rid of the collector ones, but don't get rid of the paperbacks because he's never read them. And then down here, wow, this is like wasteland down here. Cards and, oh yeah, some old Dr. Dyer books. Women who love too much. Yeah, my mom like gave me that three or four times. I think she was trying to tell me something. Um, and then uh, Dr. Dyer being in balance, a couple of old crystal and horoscope books and oh my goodness this is a mishmash some of those are my husband's peter pan and crave that's not mine okay final final oh and there's another little car my dad made and we'll head over to the final bookshelf here we go okay okay i messed up so you got a nice view of the messy floor and my tripod <laughs> but here are some old childhood favorites that my mom got me in the hardcovers, and that was just so nice. What a beautiful gift. I love Laura Ingalls Wilder. I still read these sometimes, you know, and especially in the winter or when I'm just looking for something real cozy. And then we go into, I've got three cat books that I love, Dewey, Cats and People, and The Nine Emotional Lives of Cats. Awesome books, all three of them. And these two in particular, I need to... 
I want to, I have more time now to read and I want to go back into. That was my dad's, one of my dad's favorite books, Penny. It's about a dog, I think, by Hal Borland. And, and you know, when he passed away, I, I thought, I'm going to read that. I had never really read it. I know it was his favorite book. So, Tough Transitions, Navigating Your Way Through Difficult Times. That's a really good book. And I've got a couple I want to read. Let's see. Life After Life, Closer to the Light, Beyond the Light. This is one I really need to read this summer. Uh, uh, good friends have recommended it, Women Who Run with the Wolves. Um, I was just reading Anne Frank and also Zlata's Diary. Those are really good. And uh, I'm not going to get rid of those, but I do need to find another place to store them. And then these are all the Margaret Henry horse books um, that my mom got me this too. As a, she mentioned that she was enjoying rereading them and she got them for me for Christmas. And then right down below are a few crystals and a couple of my crystal books that I put here yesterday. So that's about it. But I did want to say that this shelf isn't a good one to be saying this, but basically for a long time people said that I was like someone who could give a book prescription. You know, I could tell you what to read if you had a problem. <laughs> I don't know about that anymore because I'm learning that this, the answers are within. They're not really in a book, but sometimes that can spur spur us on. And uh, so, yeah, I used to, people would ask me, which book should I read for this? And I could tell you. I could probably tell you even if I don't have the book. So I just, I, th I was inspired by Waski Squirrel. He did this. And I'm like this monkey copycat here. But I thought it was really fun. And it's, it's a way to kind of get to know people. And hopefully, you know, it's been of interest to you or shows you that you're not the only one that has a lot of books if you do. So thank you for watching. Normally it'll be fountain pens. And I just really appreciate you being here, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye now.